Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Diet is a major lifestyle intervention that can significantly impact our health, but it's not easy to find the optimal one, as firstly, it's not one size fits all, and secondly, the information available is complicated and contradictory. At the moment, my wife and I are exploring different combinations of macronutrients and measuring our weight and other parameters like fat percentage, muscle percentage, and bone mass daily. Yesterday, we came across a very interesting study, a three-arm clinical trial of an N of 1 experiment in which the subject was overfeeding on three different diets, each of them for 21 days. The scientists carefully calculated the calories and macronutrient ratio and after each diet measured the subject's weight, waist circumference, and his feedback on the diet. There are many takeaways from this trial for us as we are doing our N of 2 self-experiment. We know many of our audience are working on their own lifestyle intervention experiments as well. We hope that you can find some takeaways from this paper. Let me get into the details. Here is the paper, a case study of overfeeding three different diets. Whether the main determinant of a weight control diet is quality or quantity of food has been debated for decades. With this in mind, this study is a comparison of three diet regimens with equal calories. The study has only one participant who ate 5,800 calories per day of three different diets for 21 days at a time. As a note, the recommended calories for an adult man is 2,500 per day. The three diets were low carb, low fat, and very low fat vegan. The author saw a weight gain of 1.3 kilograms for low carb, 7.1 kilograms for low fat, and 4.7 kilograms for very low fat vegan. Experts have taught that obesity is caused by calorie imbalance and that the macronutrient composition was less important. If macronutrient mix is irrelevant, then the same level of caloric restriction should have the same effect in all cases. Recent trials have called this view into question. Equally, if macronutrient composition is irrelevant, then overfeeding at the same level of calories should lead to the same amount of weight gain as the calorie surplus should be expected to be the same. In this trial, there was one participant, a Caucasian male, age 29. Each diet was followed for 21 days and was set to provide 5,800 calories per day. The diet was followed by a three-month washout period to return to baseline. And the order was low-carb, low-fat, very low-fat vegan. The trial started with the low-carb diet which consisted of fish, eggs, steak, green beans, and nuts. Here's the detail of the diet. I will not go through this in detail. You can find them in the paper, which is linked to in the description. But I was surprised at the fat content of nuts. So we can see in total 5.9% carbs, 22.3% protein, and 71.8% fat. And here are the pictures taken on day one. 10 and 21. He reported his subjective feelings where he said that the trial went well. He had lots of energy and was not hungry. So now let's look at the low fat diet. This had breakfast cereal, skim milk, mini pizza, yogurt, wholemeal bread, low fat rice pudding, Coke, lasagna, garlic bread, and chocolate. And here is the detailed food list. One thing I do find in this list is that it has a lot of processed food, like Coke, muffins, and pizza. The other two diets are more whole foods. I think a more whole food, low-fat diet would have been a better comparison, though this may look closer to what normal people are actually eating. In total, it has 63.9% carbs, 13.5% protein, and 22.6% fat. And here are his profile images. You can see the effect of the dye on his chin and stomach area. As he says, he did not enjoy the low-fat diet. His asthma came back and he felt cognitively foggy. And finally, the very low-fat vegan diet. 
with porridge, soybeans, bananas, various beans, olive oil, potato, rice, tofu, apples, mandarin, and pineapple. The diet uses mostly whole food rather than processed, with lots of fruits and beans. The calories were 68% carb, 16.5% protein, which is actually higher than just the low-fat diet, and 15.5% fat. And the profile pictures, some of the same effects, but less so than the low-fat. Again, he did not enjoy the low-fat vegan diet partly because of the large amounts of fiber and its effect on his digestion. And again, he had allergic reactions. Here is a summary of the results. First, the low carb. The low carbs are an increase of 1.3 kilograms in body weight, but a decrease of three centimeters of waistline, which I find really surprising. The low fat, saw an increase in weight of 7.1 kilograms and an increase of waistline of 9.25 centimeters. The low-fat vegan was in between with a 4.7 kilogram weight increase and a 7.75 centimeter waistline increase. As the authors say in the conclusion, if it was just a matter of calories, all three results would have been similar. But the results differed significantly which would point to the view of a calorie being just a calorie as being incorrect, at least for humans in the context of overfeeding. They were expecting some differences, but the amount was surprising, with a difference in weight gain between 1.3 kilograms and 7.1 kilograms in just 21 days. The study has some limitations. There was only one participant who was young and healthy, so the results may not apply to older or ill people and the results may not extrapolate to other types of low-carb or low-fat diets. But he does say that further well-controlled studies are warranted, which may have implications for advice for treatment for obesity. I found this very interesting, even if it is a very limited study. I've mentioned my concerns over some of the foods in the low-fat diet. It would also have been nice to have seen body fat percentage figures as well as weight. Still, it does match our personal experience in which we see carbs generally leading to an increase in weight. And for my wife particularly, a more ketogenic diet is less allergenic and she feels better with low-carb, high-protein diets. It would be great to see a larger follow-up study to see some data about the effects of the various diets.